So I actually returned to Vancouver on May 23rd, thinking my wife and son would be right behind me. And it wasn't until I returned to Vancouver that we received notification that the Department of Immigration was delaying visas and could give us no timeline. So we were suddenly thrust into this situation where we were separated and not knowing what the future held. So eventually, um, as this progressed and progressed, and we realized that there is no end in sight, I returned to Tokyo on June 14th to be with them. Like we're we're concerned about about our son. Like I've had to say goodbye to like three people I love at the train station, and me and my baby have been left not knowing when we're gonna come home. And being a single mom in a foreign country, like you know, is really hard. Um, there are other families here, but we they're struggling as well emotionally and like you know doing all this alone, not having any family support. It's really hard and and people just think it's so easy for us just to get family to drop everything and come to Tokyo. It's really difficult. My parents were here for a little while, but they also have um you know their lives back in Canada and you know family health issues and um you know another concern here is for some of the families uh including myself is that a lot of our prescriptions have run out and for some of us that is critical like we it we can't be running out of um you know health supplies and um and it's it's difficult even just to FedEx to be honest and book appointments here and dealing also again with different costs so it's been quite challenging to be honest Japan is a warm and welcoming country everyone here is fantastic we love yeah. it here but everyone it's just not our home and we need to get on with the next phase of our life and bring our child home. And, and we want to be setting, take, you know, we want to be embarking on the next phase of our life. And also, I'll just add in that the lack of information has been what's been the most difficult. The not knowing, not being updated. We are just left in limbo, not but knowing that, how long. But that lack of information, you know, that's not from Japan's side. That's from our own side, the Canadian side. It's Canadian side that's been um, yeah. keeping us in the dark. And we followed all the laws and we've fo followed everything up to this point. We've done everything every other family has done for the last 10 years. To so adopt from this country. We've done There's been no surprises. Like there's been three families that have been separated um, from their spouses. So that is a huge thing and that will continue to happen because people have to get back to their jobs and um, and, you know, I think health situations and also um, just missing out on the support system that we would have back home in Canada. We don't, we aren't able to go to our community center or to the local library, you know. Or call grandma and grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> you you know? know, Marcy's type 1 diabetic and. I wear an insulin pump. She wears so. an insulin pump and she's in great health. But in order to have optimal controls, she needs to have specialized supplies that can only come from Canada. So I had to make sure I could bring those back for her and. You know, we did, we're very diligent and we travel all the time and we came pre prepared with her supplies for six weeks. Well, now it's going on nine. Like that wasn't, you know, part of the problem here is that we got entangled in a process that we weren't emotionally or financially prepared for. If someone had told us that this was the way adoptions were done in Japan and you're going to have to stay there for several months and, and that sort of thing, then we could have prepared for that. But we are going on a system that's been in place for 10 years and it's done, you know, 200 plus adoptions from Japan to Canada. It just happens that we got caught in this moment for whatever reason.